Hi everybody, I'm Chase from the Disc Golf Underground. I'm also a member of Team Vibram Disc Golf. Today I'm going to be checking out the newest disc from them called the Launch. The Launch is described as a stable, so dead straight, mid-range disc. Um, this one that I have is a 156. I normally don't throw things this light. I normally throw a mid-range like an Ibex at about 175. So I brought out an Ibex of 158 to try and compare it. So I'll compare each of these discs. Basically, I'll be playing a one disc round with each one to see how I shoot and how I score and attempt to try and compare the differences between them. My normal go-to Ibex is this one, which is a 175. I typically use this on any hole under 320 feet where I just need to go dead straight. Um, 320 is about my max distance for an Ibex. So, and that's with me crushing it as hard as I can pretty much. So under 320, I'll pull out an Ibex anyways normally heavier. Today we'll see what happens on this finesse course at Spring Valley Disc Golf Course in Houston between a 158 Ibex and a 156 Launch. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so to get started with this particular video, I'm sure some of you Vibram guys will want to know which type or which mold of Ibex I am throwing. I have a Speed 48 Fade 7 Ibex that I'm using in comparison with this launch. Um, normally I throw a current mold Ibex, which means it has the flight path on the back. The very first thing I started recognizing when I compared the launch to the Ibex is I have a strong tendency to pull the launch to the right. You'll notice on those first two holes I just shanked it to the right, didn't throw it straight down the middle like I needed to, whereas the Ibex obviously did what I wanted it to because it got to the direction I needed it to go to. So first initial thought when comparing the Ibex and the launch is just how it feels in my hand and how I have a tendency to grip the Ibex correctly to get it to go where I'm aiming it whereas the launch I tend to grab it whoop, more to the right than where I'm supposed to be going again. So that's the first thing that caught me off guard with the launch is just how it feels in my hand is just different enough than the Ibex to where I don't seem to get a good clean release like I would expect from the Ibex. But I've been throwing the Ibex for about four and a half years now, so it's probably just that I'm used to that feel and that grip and that mold, whereas the launch being a little bit more domey than I think I'm used to just seems to be a different release. Whereas in this particular shot here, like you see, that's almost an identical shot. I got it down. It did what I wanted it to. It just happened to hit an early tree. But from a standpoint of most of my throws where I mess up, I tend to hold on to the launch a little bit longer and take the disc more to the right. But the launch and the Ibex have a very, very similar flight for me as I'm throwing this. I'm not trying to hit all of these as hard as I possibly can, but I'm throwing about 80 to 85% power. These discs are going 270 to 280 pretty consistently on a very similar flight path. Um, I'm just messing around here trying to putt with them as well just to get a true semblance of what I could do with a one disc round the whole time. I don't normally putt with an Ibex or with a launch. I uh, just want to try and keep all things considered equal I guess. You'll also notice periodically throughout these videos that you'll see my blue Ibex, the one that I normally play during this round. So on holes where I would normally throw an Ibex, I would pull out that one disc and throw it just so I could feel what it would be like. But on holes I would not normally throw the Ibex, I would just do the two that I'm testing, the Ibex and the launch, just to get a comparison for them. So even though this one hits this tree, that's typically the line I go through, is just, left, just to the right of that big tree right at the basket, where once again on this launch throw, I, it makes a great throw, but it's more to the right than what I was expecting. You'll notice this course is full of trees and tunnel shots. That's all this course is. So Spring Valley Disc Golf Course in Northwest Houston has 18 holes through the woods like this where almost everything is a tunnel that you have to throw dead straight through and weave through the trees. And then they've got nine holes that they play on their big golf course. And they're long power holes is what they call them. So because of the finesse style and needing to craft your shot a little bit more, I wanted to see how the launch and the Ibex would compare against each other in these finesse situations where I have to throw Anheuser's on some and 
hyzers on others and dead straight through the trees. But this Ibex that I'm throwing was insanely awesome. Like I've never thrown this disc. I normally don't throw this light, but I mean, I shot lights out with this Ibex today. The launch did okay. Not that it's a bad disc. I just kept throwing it to the right and hitting trees where I was sneaking through with the, the Ibex. This particular hole is just me messing around. I never forehand mid ranges ever. And as I was going through this course, I tried thinking of when I could use a forehand shot that wasn't just me getting out of the woods. And that seemed to be the only hole that I knew that would come up to where I could use a attempted forehand. But like I said, I never th forehand mid-range discs, and both of those went to the exact same spot. I need to work my forehand game seriously. This particular hole is the hardest hole on the whole course. It's make, like a big question mark. It sneaks off to the right. And then once you get way to the right, it comes way back left. Ibex made it through pretty clear, but once again, the launch went more right than where I needed to go. Hit an early tree and forced me to take a four on the hole, whereas the Ibex, I had a chance at two or long two. But like I said, Ibex is my go-to disc. The launch flew exceptionally well. I was very surprised with how it flew when I got it to go like I wanted to. Therefore, when I did not shank it to the right and grip lock it a little bit longer than I thought I should, it flew just like I would have expected an Ibex to fly. From a standpoint of how the Ibex feels in my hand, it's what I'm used to. It's my go-to disc for pretty much anything under 320 feet, and I can shape it pretty well both on Anheuser lines, Heiser lines, and dead straight. From that standpoint, I've never really liked the rock, for example, because the rock has always felt too domey to me. Whereas before I threw Vibram's Ibexes, I threw a buzz because it felt flatter and more shallow of a rim. It felt closer to an Ibex, even though when I compare them now, they don't feel the same to me. When I first started throwing the Ibex, it felt more buzz-like to me than a rock did. The launch almost feels like a rock in my hand where it's just more domey and different enough feeling to where I don't think I like it that much. But once again, when I threw it correctly and it released right, it did exactly what I wanted it to. It flew like the Ibex. But once again, right here, for example, I shank it to the right, just holding on a touch too long. I'm not sure if it's a little bit deeper of a rim. I haven't compared them yet with a ruler or anything. It just doesn't come out of my hand the same way that the Ibex has been. I imagine people that like domier type discs would really like the launch a lot more than they would like the Ibex, even though the Ibex isn't necessarily super flat top like a suspect or something like that. Moral of the story being, the Ibex will stay in my bag. I'll keep using it. In fact, this particular Ibex that I've never thrown before until today, that 158, it made its way into my bag after today because it felt just so effortless to throw and I wonder if I will even use my 175 as much as I have been. But this 158 was just a, a workhorse, and it was awesome. I didn't feel like I had to crush it too hard. It just flew forever, and it did. It hit the lines I was aiming at. The launch, when I could hit it, get the line correctly, it did what I wanted it to. But once again, I just had a harder time keeping it to follow the Ibex like I anticipated it to do. I made some pretty decent putts with both of these mid-ranges, which made me think I should probably use a mid-range to putt sometimes because, I mean, I'm minus seven with just an Ibex, and I shoot minus seven in my normal rounds where I'm using drivers and putters and everything else, which was fun to see with just that Ibex. This course does have a lot of tunnels, though. If you don't hit the line right in the middle, and you can definitely get bounced off into the woods and have a lot of recovery shots that you have to make. This particular day, it wasn't too bad. This is hole 17. No, normally we go to hole 18 and it's a really hard hole right after this. Almost everybody fours it, even though it's technically a three. I don't think I've ever seen a two on hole 18 before. But instead of playing that one, my phone battery was running out, so I wanted to jump out to a power hole. And so this is power nine, just a wide open shot, about 185 feet uphill. The greens and the water are out of bounds. So I made it past the green on both of these, about 300 feet for both shots, they landed about next to each other. Once again, the launch and the Ibex fly very, very similar. I like these discs a lot, though. It was fun to play this round together. So while I'm finishing up my thoughts, I thought I'd show you some of the Spring Valley Disc Golf Course that I'm playing at here. This course is awesome. It's about 15 minutes from my house. 
It's got an awesome pro shop here. They do a lot of tournaments here on the courses and they just do a really good job supporting the disc golf community. They keep the course was well maintained here and during the week you can play on the golf course. On the weekends they reserve that just for the ball golfers though. So as I'm showing you these videos of disc golf or of Spring Valley, I wanted to just go back and give my final thoughts on the launch. The launch flies very similar to an Ibex for me. It's not understable, it's not overstable, it's just a dead straight disc. In my particular way of holding the mid-range and throwing it, I kept throwing it to the right. I couldn't get it to go exactly where I wanted to go, where I felt I could control the Ibex a little bit better. So that's kind of a negative against it. As for how consistent the flight was in the weight class that I expected, well, I'm sorry, that makes no sense. The launch, when it would throw correctly, was very, very similar to my Ibex. And therefore, it surprised me, even being at a 156, I would have expected it to be more understable. And that's what, in fact, that's why I got this disc. I thought it would be my understable mid-range disc. But when I first threw it, it flew dead straight. I couldn't get it to really go understable unless I started putting it on any lines. It wasn't that nice, smooth turnover disc that I was hoping it would be, kind of like a Comet or an Element. But as you can see through this video, it flies very well. It goes straight, very stable, straight flying mid-range disc. A little bit domey, different than what I was expecting. Probably won't make my bag because the Ibex is already there and they're too similar of a disc. But for those of you that don't like the feel of an Ibex, you'll probably love the launch because it's a different grip and different feel in the hand. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you have any specific requests or questions about Vibram Disc Golf, the launch or the ibex feel free to comment below and i'll do my best to help you out look forward to making more of these videos for you guys and we'll talk with you later bye